My name is Dave Littig. I'm with ST&G Corporation. I'm here today to talk about the VGK knee. The VGK knee brings up more questions than answers. First of all, how is it possible it has all the functions of a microprocessor knee and yet does not have a microprocessor? I want to explain to you how to adjust this knee and a brief explanation of how this thing works. Let's start off with just showing you the knee. It has very simple, it, you can see that it looks just like a hydraulic unit, but it's way more complicated than just a hydraulic unit. It has an axis that you'll see down here in the distal end. That axis controls the toe lever. In other words, when does the knee get activated to start swing? And that activation is controlled by this big nut. I'm going to go quickly about the things and I'm going to talk about individual parts. We have a yield just like on an SNS knee, very similar to an SNS knee in the sense that you adjust the yield. I like to start off with adjusting the yield sitting down in a chair, much like most of the knees do, because this is a stance by default knee. So start off with making sure your stance is stable, secure, and your patient knows the resistance that the knee gives them at all phases except for swing. This is your yield, so you start off on the left side, adjusting the sitting until the patient feels help with the knee. You want it to support the sound side sitting down. That same resistance will also help in the yielding of down a steep slope, the yielding of going downstairs. All these different activities um, that also need good stance yielding. There's another feature this knee has that's surprised me in my 30-some years of working in prosthetics. It's the first knee that I've experienced that walks backwards with a flex knee. And you're going, what does that mean? I mean the patient can have a knee bent and have support enough to walk backwards, powering on the amputated side. That translates into less falls. Most amputees fall making a backwards motion. All right, first, let's start with alignment. This knee is set up very much like knees that you're used to. We want between 0 to 10 millimeters posterior on the weight line. And that weight line, because there's a lot of ways to look at it, let's just call it the TKA. That's trochanter knee ankle. If you draw a straight line between them, I want this center at 0 to 10 millimeters posterior. Now, that's the simplest thing you need to do. ML, that's up to your personal preference on how you like to set up your ML. Other than that, everything else, bench alignment is in the ballpark. The more this knee goes towards zero, the more stance flexion action you'll get at mid stance. So if you want a very stable knee, bring it posterior. If you want a very active patient to control stance flexion, bring it anterior. Now I've demonstrated this substituting this knee for microprocessors that have an anterior to weight line uh, bench alignment and this has worked just fine. I don't recommend it however. So that's bench alignment. First item as far as adjusting the knee is we are now going to talk about stance yielding. This knee is stance by default. So <clears throat> Like in many other knees, what we're going to do, adjust the knee, is we're going to have the, per the patient stand and sit. We want the prosthetic knee to assist the sound side. And the yielding for that is adjusted right here on your left side of the unit is where you adjust it. Now you're going to find you don't want to make radical moves, make minor moves until you get into the neighborhood and then make very fine moves. So adjust it like you normally are having a sitting motion. This adjustment also is going to change how they walk downhill, how they use stairs and all of that. And another really interesting feature is how they walk backwards. I will get more into that in a little bit. So that's number one. 